Guys, I've watched so many movies over the last few weeks, just trying so hard to figure out what I was gonna review today. It's not that simple. I can't just pick any bad movie. You know, it's gotta fit my vibe. It's gotta be family friendly. It's gotta spark my creative thoughts while I'm watching it. I have to be able to get the actual MP4 movie footage, which oftentimes I can't. There's a lot that goes into it. And I was stuck for the first time. So stuck, in fact, that I almost settled on that one weird movie where Megan Fox played a bird lady who was in love with Mickey Rourke. When I read this amazing comment from this amazing subscriber, Azura Blackheart. It says, Patrick Smash is a young lad with an embarrassing problem. Powerful, uncontrollable flatulence. You can see why it caught my attention. Luckily, his best friend not only has no sense of smell, but is a genius who works out how to harness Patrick's power. First to win an unpowered flight competition, and eventually to help NASA in a rescue mission to a failing space station. Thunderpants movie 2002. If the description doesn't get your attention, then I have to give up on getting you to take a look at this movie. Well, Azura, I'm sorry that you and all these other people had a hard time getting me to hear your pleas, but I have finally heard them. And I'm happy to tell you that today is the day that we talk about Thunderpants. Starring perpetually supporting actor, Conan O'Brien's brother, fire farts, singing farts, farty dust, bull cut baby, green, pencil stash, Ronald Weasley, and Keira Knightley. Until now, sir. Are you kidding me? No. Guys, this movie is the funniest, greenest, weirdest, fartiest movie that we have ever done. In fact, it is so farty that even I, the reigning queen of fart sound effects, found it overkill at times. It's a lot. It's just a farty dirt patch. So guys, grab your kids as long as they're allowed to hear the A word and as long as they're allowed to laugh at farts. Pop a few gas X and let's watch Thunderpants. But first, a word from today's sponsor. So I don't know about you guys, but I thrive in fall. Okay, forget summer, forget the new year. Jim, take New Year's away from Stanley. Right now, when the weather is cool and everything is cozy and beautiful, is the time of year when my mental state really starts to improve a little bit. And this is the time when I always start to implement positive changes and good habits that will kind of sustain me through the winter. Winter is coming. Which is why I'm really excited to talk to you about today's sponsor, Noom. So Noom is a digital health platform that leans on psychology, science, and community to help you make a happier and healthier lifestyle. It's not a diet. People think it's a diet. It's not a diet. It's nothing sketchy. Noom offers some really cool and very intuitive tools to help you track your food, your exercise, etc. And it actually includes a psychology-based course, which is my personal favorite thing about it. For example, I've I've struggled with my health the majority of my life. And one thing that I've grown to have a lot of anxiety around is the scale. Right, ladies, anyone? And the Noom program gave me this very loving, yes, I thought it was loving, even though it's a program. What am I? Pep talk, if you would, with some psychology tricks. I screenshotted it, because I liked it so much. It says, enter repeatedly into the same tough situation and it gets increasingly less anxiety inducing over time. Like building muscle. You don't do it once, but over and over again. Psychologists call it exposure. I should have known that, but I didn't. I thought you were supposed to just like, avoid stressful situations, like bury your head in the sand and then hope they go away. Turns out I was wrong. I always learn something new every time I use the Noom program that positively affects my life. Like this whole thing they have about caloric density, it just made more sense to me and was so much easier to digest as opposed to some bro on YouTube being like, eat chicken and broccoli, dude. Chicken and broccoli. Obviously, dude. The other thing that Noom does that I think is so cool, I've never seen a company do this, is that they actually update their program based on user feedback. So for example, they used to categorize foods as far as caloric density is like green, yellow, or red. And after hearing user feedback, it's now green, yellow, or orange. They just tweak little things like that to make it a more user-friendly experience. So if you're interested in checking out Noom and pursuing a healthier lifestyle, you can take your free 30-second quiz today at noom.com slash jamiefrench, or just click the link in the description box below. This is my fourth month using Noom. I truly love it, and I really think you guys are going to love it too, and it can make some positive changes in your life. So again, if you want to try it, you can take your 30-second quiz today at noom.com slash Jamie French or click the link in the description box down below. Thank you so much Noom for supporting my channel and sponsoring a portion of today's video and now back to the show. So the movie opens very weirdly with the day our main character Patrick was born. So mom's pushing, dad's holding her hand, there's a sonogram or ultrasound, whatever you call it, showing the baby during the birth, even though there's no one like performing an ultrasound on the mom. Uh, but that's nowhere close to the weirdest part. First of all, you can see this gigantic fart bubble like brewing below the baby on the screen. I guess in the 
a birth canal, and then he farts himself out of his mom into the air. <laughs> Congratulations, Mrs. Smash. You're now the proud mother of a baby poop and cry doll with a bowl cut. I love that the doctor like wasn't delivering the baby. He's just off to the side like, nah, I don't really feel like helping right now. <laughs> Hope this baby doesn't fart itself out. <laughs> Smash. Thank goodness that Dr. Conan O'Brien's brother has reflexes like a mongoose. Say cheese. And then it happened. So as you can see guys, we're off to a real starty fart. I mean, farty starts. So baby Patrick comes home and he gives his parents a pretty hard time, you know, because of all the farting. Pretty sure his mom may have even went through postpartum depression afterwards because she's not really around during these next few scenes. It's mostly just the dad doing everything for Patrick. His dad is having a really hard time coping with all the farting until one day he comes up with a bright idea to rig up a contraption to catch all the baby's farts in a trash bag. I want everybody to vote down below what they think is weirder about this part, the fart bag or the baby bowl cut. I don't get the wig at all. Like I still would have believed that this was baby Patrick without the Spock haircut. Why would you put a big bowl cut wig on a baby? So the farts like fill the trash bag up so much that it reaches a pair of scissors on the end table. And I guess his farts are just laced with rocket fuel or something combustible. I don't know what I'm talking about, but it causes an explosion, a fart explosion, if you will. <laughs> So the dad continues throughout Patrick's life to try and contain the farts with various contraptions. There's one scene where he rigs up this like pipe to the kid's butt. <laughs> Wait a damn minute. Sorry, I just can't believe the creators of this film made this cute little baby do this scene. He's so cute. Even with the Beatles wig. Anyway, again, the fart is just too powerful. <laughs> I taste it. You do? When Nick saw this scene, he goes, Oh, what, he can't move? Like he just sits there and lets the fart blast him in the face, but I'm just not realizing watching this that he's in a full body cast. You know, from all the fart-induced injuries. So he literally can't move, he just has to be choked by the fart. One might even say he was farty choked. <laughs> so the dad ends up straight up leaving the family. He abandons them because he can't take it anymore. And for some reason, this was really sad to me. Like afterwards, his sister really resents him over the dad leaving. She blames him. The mom becomes an alcoholic and also resents him. It's like pretty far breaking. So finally he starts school. He goes to kinderfarten. Give me a kiss. Mm -hmm. So he's off to a pretty rough start. His first day of school, he happens to be in a classroom with the only kids on the planet who don't think farts are hilarious. But thankfully he meets one kid, Alan, who happens to have no sense of smell. <laughs> Fast forward a few years, Alan and Patrick are still besties. And what do you know, older Alan is played by Rupert Grint. I just really want to be in this film. I don't know if this was before or after he filmed the first Harry Potter movie. I would have to assume it was before, right? Because why else would you star in a fart movie if you had starred in like one of the most popular movies released of all time? Like your career was set, you don't need the... You don't need the farts. Harry Potter is kind of similar to Thunderpants in the way that kids just do incredible things. And the farting. <laughs> anyway, Alan's full name is Alan A. Allen. He's a big nerd. Patrick's farty, so naturally they get bullied all the time by the school bully. One day at school, it happens to be Arts and Music Week. And at this school, that means an opera singer gets invited to come sing for the children, for the two-year-olds. The second greatest tenor in the world. So then the headmistress has them stand for like a random moment of silence. I guess that's what you do after an opera singer performs. Absolute silence. Not a peep, not a sound, not a whisper, not a breath. Yikes, she seems like she means business. Sure hope nobody farts. <laughs> Looks like Arts and Music Week just turned into Farts and Music Week. <laughs> Patrick seems to be pretty sad throughout this whole movie that he can't eat uh, canned beans. He has to eat a lot of bland foods, grains and stuff, you know, for his farting problem, which clearly is working really well. <laughs> I can't blame him for being bummed, honestly. His sister's bean bread looks way better. 
So then we find out that Patrick has this dream to become an astronaut. It's pretty cute. He writes a letter to the Space Center. He's like, Dear Space Center. Dear Space Center. His character is so relatable to me, like minus the farty part. I remember vividly writing letters to Nickelodeon asking them if I could be in their shows and also sending them all my ideas. Like I would sketch out ideas for bumpers they could play. <laughs> I was always writing letters to TV networks, but my letters were a little bit different than Patrick's. I want to be a spaceman, but I cannot control my arm. Any Brits in the audience today? Do kids over there just cuss in kids' movies or, or like in real life even? Because it's very jarring to me throughout this movie. My ass. My ass. My ass. My ass. My ass. It's my ass. Patrick decides to go to his genius nerdy friend Alan for help. He's like, Alan, can you help me? I want to be a spaceman, but I can't stop farting. Alan's like, you know what? I'm pretty busy building my flying machine, but... Oh, what the heck. Let's make you some fart pants. You will be in total control of your sphincter. Patrick goes outside to wait on Alan to build him the fart pants, and he sees this mysterious car parked outside of Alan's invention shed. It appears someone is creeping on the kids, and you will never believe who it is when we come back. I guess the whole bland food diet uh, wasn't working out. So finally, after an agonizingly long day, Alan emerges from the shed with the fart pants. Thunder pants! Oh, sorry, I mean thunder pants! Basically, how the thunder pants work is Patrick farts. His farts are contained in the airtight lining of the pants. He pushes a button which releases the farts into the fart box, and then he can empty the fart box into this, I don't know, fart machine. <laughs> While this is a very industrious invention, I don't know, it, I thought it was gross. The rubber, I don't know, I feel like it should be breathable. I guess breathable would defeat the whole purpose of the pants. I just pictured the whole lower half of his body just baking in there with the fart particles. I mean the farticles. You know, he just has to be in the fart. Not to mention they're not very discreet. I was so surprised that he didn't like throw some big old sweatpants over these or a skirt or something. Like if you thought you were being ridiculed for farting, imagine how the townsfolk are gonna ridicule you now with these big old rubber bloomers. I could just see the townsfolk being like, Hey Rupert, there goes that lad with the farticle trap trousers and the fart filled lunchbox again. <laughs> a pit pop pit. Mm -hmm. Cheerio. So anywho, Patrick is loving his new fart pants. Things are going super well at school until the bully kid comes back one day and wants to steal his lunchbox. Don't, David, don't! Not my fart box! <laughs> Wow, look at that, kids. All the farticles coagulated into green dust. I feel like with every scene, his farts just get more and more intense. Everything gets worse and worse. Like first it's dust, but what's next? A fart attack? So then the entire student body beats him up, which causes him to just be super down and defeated and discouraged. And he's kind of confiding in Alan about how he f wants to be an astronaut, but he feels like he's just never gonna reach his dream. And Alan is basically like, yeah, I agree. Cause you're fat. Good heavens, Patrick. Have you lost your mind? You need to be at a physical peak. Alan's actually not very nice to Patrick in this movie. Can you help me find my unique gear? You don't have one. I mean Meanwhile, those creeps, the car creeps from earlier, they're still creeping. And the main creep is Paul Giamatti. <laughs> I truly can't think of an explanation as to why so many famous and decent actors uh, signed up to do a fart flick, but here we are. Later on, Patrick's mom takes him to the doctor where they perform an x-ray for, I guess, the first time in his life, and they find out that he has two stomachs, which the doctor refers to as a unique gift. A completely useless gift. And that, just those words of him saying it was a unique gift makes Patrick feel so inspired. And he's like, you know what, my farts are a gift. A gossy, gossy gift. <laughs> so he's walking home when he suddenly hears a familiar sound. The sound of a tenor opera singer. The sound of Sir Osgood. Remember from earlier? So Sir Osgood is this very famous Italian opera singer. He's known as the second best tenor in the world because there is a first best. There's this other guy who's better than him. They're kind of like rivals, like Squidward and that other uh, squid. Squill, young fancy son. So he's trying so hard to hit this one note, but his voice keeps cracking. He can't do it. <laughs> Hashtag relatable. <laughs> but wouldn't you know it, Patrick just so happens to fart the note Sir Osgood was trying to hit at the exact right moment. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know those farts that have just been farts this whole time? Well now suddenly they're high-pitched voice farts. Weird, right? By the way, this is based on a true story. Amazing. Only Placido has ever reached it before. Until now, sir. I hope and pray that Kira Knightley's kids just make fun of her so bad and hassle her for being in a fart film. That's literally her only scene. One line. Until now, sir. Why? Why? She's Kira Knightley. Who cares? I want her to be in a fart film. So then Alan ends up using Patrick's double stomach gift as a model for his engine or something for this flight machine he's building, and the boys enter a flight competition that Sir Osgood happens to be attending. What are the odds? The competition is basically to see who could build the best flying contraption. It's very chaotic. Not one single contestant built anything that could fly. Everybody's just falling. Their machines are falling apart. They're like dying. Until of course, Alan and Patrick step up to the plate and they win the competition by flying a machine fueled by Patrick's fart. <laughs> So guys, the point of this scene in particular is that Paul Giamatti and the creeps are still watching and also Sir Osgood is watching. So now everybody wants something from these children. You're about to see what it is. One day on his walk home from getting revenge on the bully kid, Patrick sees his best friend Alan get into the car with those creeps. I thought it was so weird, not that anything in this movie should be normal, but I thought it was so weird that Alan and Patrick are literally best friends and Alan just like slowly drives away with the window rolled down and they just look at each other and they don't say any words. And then Patrick ends up finding out that Alan left with the creeps to go to another country. Alan has gone to another country. Another country. Why is everybody so mean to Patrick? Makes me so sad. Should I call him? I think I'm gonna call him. I just wanna like tell him that everything's gonna be okay and that I love him even though he's a fart machine. No. Hi, yes, can I talk to Patrick? Well, this is Patrick. Are you sure? This is Patrick. You don't sound, Patrick's British. You don't sound British. This is Patrick. Oh yeah? Well, if you're really Patrick, then you should know exactly how many stomachs you have. You and I both know that you're just using me as a distraction. Yeah, that's what I thought. You're not Patrick. No! This is Patrick! <laughs> not to worry guys, because Patrick too gets the opportunity to travel the world when Sir Osgood shows up at his door. Don't know how he knew where he lived, but he shows up at his door and invites him to go on tour with him. And Patrick just agrees. <laughs> All right then. He doesn't go ask his mom, I guess because she's like a deadbeat. So he just goes on tour with this strange man in hopes of finding Alan. Mind you, he has no idea where Alan went, nor does he know where he's even going with Sir Osgood. So I guess he's just gonna have to wander around random cities like, Alan! 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 Ow! Alan! 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 Ow! You guys, there's still so, so much left of this story. I cannot believe the turn it takes, but I need a drink break so I can better articulate it to you. No! No! So we gotta take a break. Stick around. Don't touch that dial. Tonight after night, I did the high bit with my arms. Yeah, guys, so he goes on tour uh, with Sir Osgood uh, to fart the high notes. <laughs> It's really weird, he suddenly has control over the pitch of his farts, like that guy from TikTok. It's very simply going to be... That's and because now the audiences are all fooled that Sir Osgood can hit this high note, he starts to steal all the thunder from his rival opera singer, Placido, and he becomes the number one tenor in the world. Until that is, the other guy finds out that Osgood is a big Party fraud. And I sing the high bit with my ass, Mr. Cedo. That's a secret between me and Mr. John. Way to rat out your friend there, Patrick. So Placebo, or whatever his name is, is shocked, as one would be. Read your ass. And he decides to sabotage Patrick and Osgood with some laxatives that he just so happens to have. Carries around with him, I guess. And he puts him into Patrick's pudding. And guys, listen, I hate side plots, okay? I usually try and gloss over them or skip over them completely, but this one is very important, okay? Just bear with me. So that night at the fart opera, the laxatives kick in. And when it's time for Patrick to fart the high note, it is full blown uh, fart mageddon. <laughs> Goodness! It already stank! 
Patrick, look what you did to Alfred and Basil. Basil, you're gonna regret having your mouth open so big. Patrick's farticles are, they're not like other farticles. Remember kids? <laughs> so the other opera singer seizes the opportunity to expose Osgood and Patrick for their fart shenanigans. <laughs> Frank! Way to go, Patrick. I'm sure nobody can see you back there. Why is he bent over again? He already stood up and faced Sir Osgood. I don't know what's happening. Is he planning on letting another one rip? <laughs> I digress. Finally, it is time for the big shocker. As Placido is up there exposing Osgood and Patrick, a spotlight from like the lighting rig on the stage comes loose, comes crashing down, and straight up kills Placido. <gasps> as in, he dies to death right before our eyes in a kid fart movie. Read all about it. Night is a decent. I did not, I did not see that coming. So although there was hundreds of witnesses and literally no crime was committed, Patrick gets charged with murder. They book him, he's gotta give his fingerprints. The opera world was in turmoil. You're doing it wrong. He ends up on national news, which Alan happens to see and enlists the help of his new friend, Paul Giamatti, to help get Patrick off of death row. Yeah, that's right. He literally goes on trial. He's prosecuted by <laughs> Stephen Fry. This evil child. Why would you do this movie? He's found guilty. He is sentenced to death and literally put in front of a firing squad. I am Anyway, like I said, child Patrick is placed in front of a firing squad, which he is weirdly chill about. But thankfully, Paul Giamatti shows up and saves him at the last possible second. He just explains that he's United States Special Forces and that the British Home Security authorized Patrick's transfer into the custody of the US government. He then tells Patrick that his unique gift of farting is very much needed at this time. All right then. All right then. Let's move out! I have a question. If you guys wanted Patrick so bad, why didn't you take him at the same time you took Alan? Could have maybe avoided the whole like death row thing. Just curious. So they put him on a plane on which they have prepared a room for him, complete with pictures of him and Alan, green and black striped shirts, which he wears throughout the whole movie. <laughs> and I guess the prison must have accommodated his preferences because his prison jumpsuit matches all of it. That's not even funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. The scene is sad though, because he looks over at the picture of his friend and he cries, like really cries. It kind of hurts. <laughs> I'm not crying. <laughs> My eyes just burn like from all the farts. Well, suddenly Paul Giamatti, who by the way, his name in this movie is Johnson J. Johnson or something. <laughs> Mr. Johnson. He tells Patrick to come meet the briefing team and he pulls back the curtain. And who is it but Alan? Alan! Again, it is the fart themes. Okay, <laughs> get off my back. Alan explains everything to Patrick. He explains that he was recruited by Mr. Johnson at the uh, flight competition to come help the United States Space Center with some sort of space mission. I'm not gonna pretend to understand what the space mission actually is. I don't know what's wrong with their rockets, why they need- Alan! And a kid who farts. It's not important. Just know they are doing space stuff. You're going to be a spaceman. They take Patrick to meet the general of the space station. You're a fruit, son. Who leads him into a room that holds the secrets of the space station. What? What a twist. Look at that, guys. Children are in charge of the rescue rocket mission. So the other kids explain to Patrick how they're gonna use his farts to launch a rocket, but first they have to practice. <clears throat> How is this okay to just do in a room with everyone standing a few feet away with no protective gear or anything? At least the general is super happy about it. You possess the most powerful tutor I ever saw. By the way, he plays the king in the fairy tale theater Princess and the Frog episode. Rumpelstiltskin. Just as a fun fact, I knew there was a reason he scared me. So after just two hours of training, the farting child heads to space. Even though this guy tells the general that there is a huge chance that Patrick could uh, spontaneously combust and die to death. What's the chances of this happening? 79%. Meanwhile, his mom and sister are watching the launch on the TV like, oh, hey, I was wondering where my kid went. All right, guys, it's time for the launch. Let's go. Let's blow ass. So he farts himself into space. Everybody cheers. We Oh wait, he dies? Life support systems are... <clears throat> okay. 
He's alive! Phew! <laughs> Whoo! <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> About had another fart attack. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was not me. That was a sound effect. Contrary to popular belief, I actually don't fart. <clears throat> it's a gift. Sorry, what were we talking about? Anyway, Patrick and the crew are able to do whatever it was that they were supposed to do in space. I still don't know what it is. They make it back to Earth safely. Patrick becomes a hero, and his mom and sister could still give a flying rat's patoot less about him. All he did was fart. Oh, man. What a gas. This is my favorite movie review so far, I kid you not. <laughs> I found the budget. It's a miracle, I know. The budge was seven million doll hairs, whilst the worldwide gross was three million forty-two thousand and four hundred and ninety-seven doll hairs. That makes me so curious as to how much the big name actors were paid. I wish I understood how all that worked. The reviews did not disappoint, as I knew they wouldn't. Let's check a few out for all 20% of you who are still here. I've never seen a movie quite like Thunderpants. It was on the television at a friend's house and just his description of the movie made me laugh. However, we watched it anyway. I've honestly never laughed so hard in my entire life. Everything from the stupid quotes about wanting to be a spaceman to Patrick's flat hairstyle, I'm sorry, you mean bowl cut? To the green theme <laughs> is absolutely hilarious, but not in a good way. What? It was a pathetic excuse for a movie, but wow, it really blew me away. This movie will break wind before it breaks any records. <laughs> That part's true, but I think it was hilarious in a good way. The real gems, though, were the 10 star reviews. Thank you, movie. You are very cool. My wife is now no longer leaving me because I showed her this film. Okay. I know what to do if Nick ever wants to leave me. Just whip out the fart movie. Then this was my all time fave. This review comes from an IMDb user named Junk Monkey, and it's called The Universal. It's a film for kids about farting, for God's sake. Everyone farts. I fart, you fart, he, she, or it farts. Kings, queens, presidents fart. <laughs> Everybody farts. Farting is the universal common denominator. It's probably the one thing everyone in the world has in common. We all fart and we all have dreams. And that's what this film is really about. Finding your dream and realizing it. Personally, guys, I am literally obsessed. I don't know how they did it, but they made me love this stinky, stinky, farty movie. I developed so much affection for the main character and I laughed my butt off so many times. This is now my favorite and most fartwarming movie. Gotta go, guys. <laughs> Gotta fart. Been waiting for like four hours, so. Subscribe if you want, if you like hearing people make fun of stuff. That's what I do. Join us over. <laughs> Special thanks again to Noom for sponsoring me today. Special thanks again to Azura and Tommy for getting this film into my hands today. And I will catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out. <laughs>this video is also brought to you today by another youtuber named tommy's board this is a lovely gentleman who also reviewed this movie he was one of the only youtubers i could find who reviewed this movie also and he like the gentleman and scholar that he is emailed me the actual movie footage so that i could bring it into my editing software literally just before i gave up because i couldn't find the actual footage anywhere it's not even on none of the torrents on pirate bay worked the dvd wasn't going to come in time he saved us his review is hilarious go check it out i will link him in the description down below do it for me. Fart yourself half to death for me. If you were really my friend, you'd fart yourself into oblivion. Why does the same news anchor man work for the US and the UK? The little deleted scenes, like when the credits are rolling, are hilarious. <laughs> Here's some old books, father. Sir Osgood just yeeted his son. <laughs> They kept the bowl cut wig on every single actor who played Patrick throughout his life, even the newborn baby, but they didn't put it on this kid. Where's his bowl cut? How come he didn't have to look like Spock? I literally just heard a freaking fart come from over there and nobody's in here with me. <laughs> what the hell? And he and Patrick get reunited. <laughs> The trivia on IMDb says there are 50 farts in the movie. I would have guessed more, but okay. Not my fart box. Fart box. Not my fart box. <laughs> I don't know how to say that in British. Who cares? <laughs> I'm making myself laugh on the monitor because it looks like her. Who cares? I want it to be in a fart film. Who cares? I want it to be in a fart film. Who cares? So, y'all was in a fart film. So, so, so. Cool, bye.